The only thing better than an epic miniature, an epic base to go with it. Before we start, I helped design this miniature. Actually, more than 30 miniatures. But we will talk about more of that later. I want to do an inset base. Basically, a diorama base, but the model itself is on a separate playable base that can be removed from the diorama and used on the table. To help create the inset base, I am using this base from Kingdom Death that comes in two pieces. The larger piece is going to get hot glued to my plinth, and then the smaller piece will be my playable base. Okay, I found this really cool piece from Reaper Miniatures. It's basically like a wall of bricks with the remains of a stained glass window. I'm thinking a set of stone stairs leading up to this piece with my figure. Curved stairs will help lead the eye around the base and up to the figure. Okay, now that I have a plan, let's go on to implementing it. I'm going to create the majority of this base using bark and cork board. Bark is going to serve as the area that I want to really look like stone, and then cork is going to be used for the stone staircase, as well as any other man-made elements, and to just generally fill out the base. Once I have a good size for each step, I'm cutting rectangles from the cork to create stairs to the top platform, then gluing it all together. Hi, Mochi. Oh my god, you scared me, Moch. Hi! Well, alright then. First sign of mischief, though. At the first, the first sign of mischief, you're getting kicked off. And now I'm filling the rest of the base with cork. Cork is great to work with because it can be ripped and shredded to give more organic texture to better match the bark. You're being surprisingly well behaved, Mochi. All right, let's position my stained glass window, my base, and glue it all together. Moch. No. Uh, hey, hey! Oh, no, I, I said, I said one chance. No, I said one chance. Milliput time. Milliput is cheaper than green stuff and is sandable, which is the main reason that I really like this. What are you eating? What are you- No, what are you eating? Oh my god. I'm placing milliput around my hot glued base to hide the seam. And while the milliput is still wet, I'm going to use a piece of bark as a stamp to give that natural rocky texture to better match the rest of the bark. Let's airbrush. It's primed, and I did this in the wrong order. I was so excited to start airbrushing this that I didn't actually cover up the seams between all the corks. So those lines between each cork sheet are really obvious. I'm covering up these seams by using baking soda and super glue. Baking soda and super glue work together to create a really realistic two scale natural texture. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna add the same texture to other parts of the base to match the area that I'm covering the seams as well as add more variety. But what are ruins without some debris? Let's go ahead and add some interest by adding a skull, a shield, as well as some general rubble. Okay, let's talk about painting. When painting a diorama, you should always consider how the model and the base are going to work together to make it look like one cohesive unit. The plan is to paint the fabric a maroon color and then the metal jade to a very cool yellow. 
I'm then using those same colors and using them on the base. I'm taking the maroon color that I used for the fabric with a bit of brown to work as the base color, and then I'm going to do a mixture of jade and pale yellow as well as some gray to get my stone color. We want the base to complement the model, not detract from the model. So we want to remove some of that saturation and change it a little bit to make it cohesive, but not completely matching either. Next, I'm brushing with a dome brush to get fast highlights. Then picking out the details with lining and edge highlighting. All right, let's take a minute to talk about all the miniatures I helped design. A year ago, I made a video called We Need Better Miniatures, where I talked about the need for better, well-clad, less sexy women miniatures. After that video, the Printing Goes Ever On reached out to me asking if I would like to collaborate with them to create a woman-focused D&D campaign so that we could fulfill the desire for such miniatures ourselves. I designed more than 30 unique characters crafted to be an individual and most importantly, realistic. Not every character is white and not every character has a perfect physique. It was important to me to create characters who were realistic, badass, and made everyone else feel like they could find models that made them feel welcome in the community. These models are highly detailed, gorgeously sculpted, and were really easy to print. Best of all, you can get the core set as soon as you pledge. If you want to support me, if you want to support the Printing Goes Ever On, and badass women that make the community more open and welcoming for everyone, be sure to check out D&D is a Woman, link in my description box. Right onto the foliage. Foliage is a key aspect of any diorama or display base. I usually feel like I'm in the ugly stage before I put the foliage on, right up until I put the static grass on at the very last minute. The color of your foliage should ideally add to the model, but at the very least it shouldn't subtract from the model. When doing a base like this, you want to work from the bottom up. And by bottom, I mean like bottom layer of nature. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is adding a layer of leaves to the base. I'm thinking that for the majority of my ground cover, I'm going to use this oregano? I... I don't know. Uh, this spice. I'm also going to use the red leaves that I made for my Yandrasta last year to help pull in the fabric. The red will also serve as a nice pop against the teal steps. Lastly, I'm adding a diluted red wash to help tie the leaves together. Okay, leaves are done. Let's add in some clump grass. Unfortunately, none of this clump grass is the right color. Luckily, that can easily be fixed by airbrushing it. I'm painting the clump grass in teal and green. Teal to match my armor and green to match the vines and leaves already on the base. Painting clump grass is so much easier with an airbrush. When doing it with a paintbrush, it always clumps together and looks less realistic. To make this grass look more natural, I'm cutting it into smaller pieces and then super gluing it onto the base. The final step is adding flocking. This little sort of seed texture from Army Painter is my favorite flocking, as it works as such a great contrast against the static grass flocking. So I'm glopping my clear drying glue on my base, layering on my flocking, and then patting it off upside down and letting it dry.
finally, she's done. I am so happy to be done with this. It was a really nice change of pace, but I'm kind of over it. If you like me and my channel, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, go join me over on Patreon. And if you haven't already, go over to my mini factory and support D&D as a woman. It would mean the world to me. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.